come up. So, so many videos I have talked about um, Dukey machines. Now, they hold a 40% global market share, 40% worldwide, which is phenomenal, isn't it? So, that means people like Janome and Brother and Singer, who are the other big names that we know about, have a shared value in that market share. But then there are other people who are in that market as well. So, um, hi Brabord. <laughs> I'm going to be looking at my iPad and looking at the computer as well at the same time. So I might not see you all. So we've got Carol, we've got Mary, Carl and Sandy. Hello, thank you for joining me. So, um, Carl, ask that question again because you, you've mentioned something that I was a little bit concerned about and I thought, oh no, I want to address that. Um, and I don't know if I did on one of your questions. Um, so yeah, Juki holds quite a big market share and all the others make up the rest of the 60%. So Juki to be holding that amount of, um, you know, own that many machines with their name on it around the world. So we're looking at industrial machines in factories worldwide. We're looking at colleges, schools. So if you come through the fashion industry, it is a brand that you probably are more than likely know. So I was sitting there, I had the jab last week, and I'm lying there really, because I'm feeling poorly, feeling sorry for myself. And um, suddenly it comes to my mind, I haven't got a Juki. <laughs> so many people have asked me and spoken to me about Jukis. What do you think about this model? I don't know. I can honestly, hand on heart, say I don't know. Um, so <laughs> that's why this came about. So I can show you, I've had to, take the um, uh, machine out of the box. I've not done anything other than take it out of the box and I didn't take it out. I had to get a big strong fella to do it for me. And um, I don't know, I, <laughs> I don't know much about it. So what I wanted to ask was, um, I am, thank you Kate, feeling a lot better. Um, we've got Kate in, Terry and Mitchell, it's Juki time. Yeah, the crew is back. Well, you see, Bramblewood, um, what I wanted to do was make sure you all had an opportunity to say hello to each other. And it gives me a chance to sort of play with machines as well on the side. Um, the knotting problem, but on cottons, not just on stretch fabrics. Um, was that on a front-loading machine? I think sometimes on front-loading machines, they get all a bit tangled up if you sew off the fabric. We've got Pam in the house as well. Hi, Pam. Uh, my quilting machine is a Juki. You happy with that, um, Emma? Um, um, I would love to know. So if you're a Juki owner, I would love to know. You can see in the back, I've got my Juki, there it is, Juki overlocker. And um, it's been brought to my attention a number of times, which I have picked up on already, so I'm not trying to be a smart, smart fan. But it is something that's similar to the Benina 800DL uh, and it's so similar, in fact it's a carbon copy, it just is um, the same machine, exactly the same, just with a much lower price tag, which is great. <laughs> so Juki, um, so the thing about the Juki is, let's go back to what I was saying, I don't know, I'm going to see a bit of notes <laughs> so I wouldn't get sidetracked. The thing about Juki is, because they hold this market share, they must be doing something right, they must be doing something good. And it's primarily the industrial. Now, you might remember in one of my videos, I talked about what is a surge or what is an overlocker, and we talked about the history of surge. And now, for those of you who don't know, surge is a worsted wool, it's a fabric. And uh, it was Miller who created this machine, actually, and it was on a big uh, factory size scale so that he could edge this wool that was fraying and hence the name Serger came along. We didn't know it as an overlocker. That's the technique it was doing in overlocking. And then uh, a few guys from Japan came together and invented the domestic version uh, called the Juki, called their company Juki. So that was how the Juki overlockers came about. So, um, they hold such a great big market share, their machines must be good. Why haven't I got a Juki? So I don't really know much about it. I want you all to um, hit me up with any information. Um, I'm going to have a look and see what else we are talking about. 
I love it. So solid, but extremely envious of yours after reading up on it last night. Well, I don't know what's there to be envious about yet. Uh, Mrs. J Dutch has joined us, and so has Marianne caught up. Been out sewing because of a shoulder injury. Oh, back in the game now. Enjoy my Nikki. Brilliant. Okay, so um, what should we do? Should we just unbox the <laughs> unbox the machine? It's already out of the box. Um, the other thing is, hi Colin. Um, the other thing is, um, I also got um, electric scissors. Now, I have taught, and I can't say I teach because I haven't taught for literally a year now because it was last February. Um, end of February, March, when I was saying to um, people, I think I'm going to slow down now. I think all this was starting to pick up, wasn't it? The COVID. Blah. Um, so I haven't really had anybody here for a year. Change the camera. You should be able to see that. Okay, there we go. So it's the Juki DX7. So I'm going to get up off my chair. I'm going to reveal that. Now, it's, um, I meant to look this up, but Juki have uh, said that they are using as little packaging as possible. If I just tip that up, then hopefully I can be talking to you rather than you always see the top of my head. Uh, Juki use the minimum amount of packaging. And when I opened the box, um, there was just a polystyrene at the top and um, the rest of it just packaged really well and you've got a solid plastic cover so you're you're seeing this um like me for the first time so i've not really seen anything um and i don't I'm, i've not been able to read the manual because it's here so i've got the manual here i've got a cd um which i think is amazing so again going back to dookie having that much share that they must be doing something right now the reason to healthy price tag it's for a serious sewer, a dressmaker. It's um, industrial strength <laughs> inside with the domestic features. So in theory, I should be able to do everything I've been doing, but on uh, with the industrial power. Okay, so let's go through it all. So we've got the manual, we've got a CD in there. I haven't got a CD player, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about that. I have got a CD player somewhere in the loft, I think. Uh, a knee lift, these are great. My only concern with the knee lift is my table has a lip. It's an old fashioned table. I'm going to show you that the one I had with brother wouldn't fit, but can you see this one actually fits? I'm not sure if it'll fit when it's on the machine, so that will fit. Knee lifts are great when you're quilting, when you're doing fiddly bits on dressmaking, on jackets and coats. Knee lifts are excellent. We've got a cable. Am I going to get cross with all this plastic, do you think? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I do, don't I? For those of you who know me. Now, I've heard loads about this. I'm going to bring the iPad over because you guys are saying stuff and I don't know. I've uh, got Colin from, well, as I said before, it's a very computerised sewing machine for you. I know. You mentioned that on Instagram. It's a computer. <laughs> Computer sewing machine, what am I doing with a computer machine? I don't know. Well, I want it to be the one that is perfect for me. So the thing about this foot, the pedal, is apparently you have a heel um, feature. So I, I was expecting buttons on there, so um, but there isn't. It's just a nice curve. Let's get it out of the bag. Get it out. What it's supposed to do is... I'm, I'm supposed to be able to set the machine up so it either cuts the thread. I'm going to throw everything on the floor. Because what I did was when I ran Juki up, I couldn't believe the attention um, I had on this. I mean, I just asked a question and every question was answered. And that's the kind of service I need. I, I remember saying to you that um, when I was... Um, with one of the other companies that I was told that I should only ever talk to a customer for more, no more than 10 minutes. 10 minutes when you're spending any kind of money on a sewing machine, that's absolutely ridiculous and it made me very cross. Um, but I can't find it now. Cut the thread. Do you know what? We'll find the manual. We'll, we'll get it in the manual. But it's supposed to cut the thread, it's supposed to pivot for you or it's supposed to do um, other things. 
Um, but yes, we've got a bag, a bag full of goodies. We've got the needle punch, hole punch for your buttonholes. That feels really sturdy, not cheap plastic. We have an impressive walking foot. That looks nice. Oh, it's got a screw on the back, an adjustment screw. Oh, right, we're going to have to see what that adjustment screw does. Hi, Frozen. We have an embroidery foot there, um, a quilting bar, some organ needles. Okay. Do you know what that is? <laughs> Let's just say, say now. Not sure what that is. We'll work it out. And a Teflon foot, always useful. I've got my fabric ready, the leatherette. And we have some extra three feet. We've got a um, overcast foot, an applique foot, and a quilting foot. So I'll put all those back. They, all the feet always look so different and it throws me for a minute. I have to stop and think. Maybe it's me, I don't know. <laughs> all right, so I'm looking forward to this um, cool foot pedal. And it's a nice size as well. It's got grippy rubber feel to it. So, I mean, I think they have a DX3, a DX5, and a DX7. The reason you go, you, I think, what I was asking, most people go for the DX3 or the DX7, uh, and the DX5 gets left behind, because I think the difference between the DX5 and this machine, look at that, all that inside, so you've got good protection. I think it's really heavy. You wouldn't take this to class. I don't think I would. I don't think I would take it to class. It's too heavy. Um, and probably a bit too expensive as well. Right, lots of plastic bags everywhere. Let's pull up the press foot so that we can take off this polystyrene there. And lots of silicone gel. Do not eat. Throw it away. So that's, they always put these in, don't they, to protect the... Um, machine from getting rusty. Lots of blue tape. It looks very similar and, I'm, and I have said this, it looks very very similar to a baby lock serenade or serene. I think it's called a baby lock serene and also the brother F420s. I had the brother F420s in my class for two years so I know that machine very very well. That's good. So it's got a protection for the um, take up lever from preventing it from coming down which is very clever but then these guys they know them so let's just check around the back gosh right very heavy now this machine goes at 1050 stitches a minute i'm going to see if there's a, a power on there 75 watts the thing about the 75 watts is you know discussing it a bit more these machines because they're computerized sewing machines they're dc motor and dc motor is um now some people say it makes the machine more powerful there isn't any particular reason for it a dc motor to make it more powerful all that it does is it just allows a good constant feed and then um through through the, the machine so it's just more reliable and i think that's the thing but now i've opened this flip lid it looks absolutely beautiful should we bring you in a little bit if we can so there are something like 287 stitches on here, or is it 387, it's a, a, it's a lot of stitches, but again with me I always say it, it's great having all these different stitches on a sewing machine, but can it do my regular straight stitch and zigzag stitch? And if it can, I'm happy with it. Um, as a dressmaker I don't tend to use a lot of stitches. I think when I teach, particularly kids, they like to use um, decorative stitches and I think if you do um, a lot of making napkins and table wear or maybe, you know, pinnies, then it's lovely to have lots of uh, decorative stitches um, and free motion embroidery, you might want to use them for that. Let's plug this in. Oh, thank you. That extra, that's, that's my extra spool. Um, it looks similar to your Genomia Atelier 6. Ooh. Does it have an unpick stitch? 
That's the one I use the most. Um, do you know what? I don't think it did have a seam ripper in there, did it? I don't see one. Right, okay, so it looks like your standard sewing machine, doesn't it? Uh, lots of stitches in there. You've got lots of fonts in there. Oh my word, there we go. Carl, you wanted to know. <laughs> there we go. We've got some extra things going on in here. Lots of different feeds for applique thoughts. Uh, overcast and again, your edging, not your edging. Um, overcast and blind hem. And the spool, cap, screwdriver. This one looks fancy. I like that. Your brush. These always make me laugh. I always think they're very small. I'm sure there's a reason for this um, pointy bit at the end. I see them on a lot of machines. Maybe it's for, you know, when you get the feed dogs. Um, a lot of lint stuck in the feed dogs. There you go. Here's your, your other screw cap and your bobbins, extra bobbins. That's very tidy. Very tidy. Now, I've seen one of these before. <laughs> I saw it on a necky, didn't I? Oh, there's some more needles. Um, can I see this? Can you see this? Am I too close? There you go. This is pretty impressive. This is your buttonhole foot. It's an electric buttonhole foot. And um, it has different widths on there. You clamp your fabric in there. If you were going to make this on the back, <laughs> I just think this is amazing. I'm just absolutely amazed by this. I'm punching over. Look at that. <laughs> Clamps your fabric in there. And then you, you just press a button and it does it. Now, I've seen this on a necky, and I'm assured that this is the original um, design. And if I can find a necky one, I'll get it out and see. And you can see it's a lot smaller. Their necky versions are a lot smaller. This one is pretty kick ass. <laughs> there, I said it. This one is amazing. And I should play with this. Let's leave it out and let's have a little go with it. Let me get this back in. Oh, that's cool. Now there's another feature on here that um, I wanted to uh, look at as well. In the needle plate, okay, so this is a problem we've been discussing recently on Instagram earlier. I've got two cameras and I've lost two. Um, on Instagram we were talking about, I, I did a quick video on stretch fabrics on your regular standard sewing machine because people have been having problems with it and I've had quite a few requests about it which is why I put that on there and um, this machine has an amazing feature so and I've been looking forward to seeing this so what you do now I'm not sure how you do this because I've not seen it properly um, there aren't many videos online at all and I've really searched so um, have a look so if I pull this bobbin off there's this tiniest little hook there. I think you can see it. Okay, if I remove the foot. Now, just remember, you're, I'm just sitting on. I don't know. But you flick it and you can see, see that tiny hole there? Basically, what happens is that 7mm gap now becomes just that um, straight stitch uh, needle plate. So I've not got to go and buy a separate separate needle plate and um, I've just flicked that switch and it's as easy as that as easy as that I can't do it <laughs> I'm sure we're gonna have to get the manual out but I thought that was pretty impressive um, the feeding mechanism is standard now on most machines like this isn't it so, uh, so you just put your thread in and it cuts off um, easily and then we set it up very straightforward let's have a look at other points on the screen as well. I'm just so excited that I'm losing track. Okay, I can see how awful I am. Actually, I've got a box here as well. This box, another thing we've got is, 
um, with this machine. I can't um, see. I'm not a huge quilter, as you know, but I do occasionally do some. But this is a pretty big um, extension table for the machine. And it goes up along here. That is a nice size, very wide. This machine isn't particularly massive. You know, if I put another machine next to it, let's grab this one, because a lot of people know this size. So it's not that big, considering it's just very heavy, because there's a lot going on inside. Um, and then to be given a table with the machine as well, this size, is pretty good. So as a dressmaker, you, you'll love it. As a quilter, you'll love it. As somebody who makes bridal wear, you love it. It's it's a good size. I'm going to put this back on because I want to go over the machine a bit more. Let's see what you guys are saying. Um, straight stitch side plate to stop light fabrics going through. Yes, thank you. Yes, so the reason you want a straight stitch um, needle plate is so that those stretchy fabrics, um, for example, get pulled through very, very easily and it avoids it because it gives you a, a more sturdier plate for your fabric to sit on. But also a lot of people use it in quilting. Um, again, it's it just helps support your fabric better. Um, what's that? Uh, the, another feature that, about this machine is the automatic tension. Now, in theory, what you're supposed to be able to do with this machine, and a lot of machines, they have these automatic tensions, but they're not really automatic, and they do shift, but I've been assured that I can work on leather, or leatherette, because I don't use leather, um, and go straight into chiffon, which I probably wouldn't do, um, but then you don't know, do you? Um, you should be able to go straight from one fabric to another without having to change your tension and you have got the settings on the machine already to change but if you don't that you, chances are you don't need to know I was watching another reviewer um, on the DX5 and she said nine nine and a half times out of ten she never changes the tension and I think there are going to be times where you might need to switch this so um, I've been assured that's going to work so I'm going I'm looking forward to trying that out so I'm not sure how much I can try out today because I think it's really nice unboxing this and having a look at it. But, so there's so many stitches on there. We've got lots of fonts on there. There's another feature on here. So there's some great features. I mean, we are really talking industrial standard here. So, you know, things like the um, heel um, selection thing on the pedal, which you can select just push your heel down and do different features, it has different features. This foot um, for your buttonhole is an amazing feature already. Um, yes, you've got lots of accessories, but again, we're going to, if it doesn't do what you need it to do, then is there any point in having all the different stitches? But it does have different stitches. Um, fonts as well, so there's one, two, three, four different fonts. You've got 15 buttonholes. Uh, 15 buttonholes is pretty impressive. I always tend to stick with one or two different designs. Um, but it has managed to do thick woolen coats as well. I was given, actually, because I was talking about it, uh, the chap was really brilliant. And he said, do you know what I'm going to do? I've not lost you. Have I lost you? He said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some samples up and send them down to you. And he did. I didn't, really, I didn't expect him to, but he has. So he's sewn on some, some leather out there and some organza, some flannel, some fleece, and the stitches just are immaculate. Look at this, um, the organza I wanted to show you, the buttonhole on that. I don't know about you, but if you stitch on chiffon and organzas, but my buttonholes sometimes look a little bit pathetic, so it puts me off making, you know, blouses, chiffon blouses, um, denim, so I like that that how it's jumped from those number of layers so we've got what's so it's folded it up twice so we've got two four six layers and it just jumps over no problem and then 
this came in, but I think that's an overlocker finish. That's a part of it. That's a part of it. <laughs> um, and okay, so other features that this machine has. There's a float button. Now the float button, what that does is this feature here. So we've got different features. So uh, we've got the keypad function. So the keypad function gives you all the different stitches that are on the front there. And then I'm guessing that when you press those, uh, that button there, then you, you will use all the different features up there. Um, I don't know. I'm going to have, to have to have a play with this. Lovely sound on there. And then, um, again, we've got some more decorative stitches there. And use all the different fonts. Pretty impressive, that. Um, I'm sure that's the cutting, automatic cutting, and we've got a float function. Now the float function is another function that I've not really come across. The float function is the presser foot just releasing the pressure by half. Is that right? Or it lifts up the presser foot. You need to see this. It lifts up the presser foot um, and reduces the pressure by half. Um, so how do you do that? Does it do it? Don't know. Again, I'm gonna to have to read the manual, aren't I? <laughs> um, but it reduces the pressure by half. Um, and when I was speaking to a lady at a fabric shop, I called up a fabric shop yesterday and I thought, sure, I'm gonna treat myself to some fabric. And she actually said she's got this model, and I asked her about her favourite feature, and her favourite feature she actually brought up was the float. So I've not uh, come across this, and she said what she does is even though you've been given a walking foot with the machine, um, you just tap the float function and it just lifts up the press foot and it just sews along, which I thought was a bit strange because surely you need the pressure of the press foot pressing down on your fabric against the feed dogs for the feed dogs to actually function. But no, what happens is because you might be using thick fabric. So if you're using your quilting, so your, um, what did I put that? I had a big thick thing to show you. So if you're um, quilting and you've got thick layers, what sometimes happens, and I don't know if you've seen it um, or you know you've experienced it, but what happens is sometimes you you sew along, sew along, sew along, and you get to a crossroads, and then your fabric decides to pleat itself over. So, <laughs> so you get that one stitch, and um, or the fabric just. Uh, pushes itself over and you end up with a tiny, it's a tiny pleat, but you know it's there and it's frustrating. Um, and she said, you don't, that's eliminated, so that's gone. So I've experienced that in the past, but also with, if you're doing leather handbags, which some of you do, um, if you're sewing leather and you've got quite a number of layers, um, you might want to use the float function rather than the walking foot, and it just uh, moves across. The thing about the walking feet, I don't know if it is on here, sometimes, um, and they do, the walking foot have these ridges, don't they? And that's the whole point, they have these ridges on there, and they can be quite severe on your fabric, so leave marks. And if you're making something like a leatherette bag, you don't want to be left with those marks. So I'm looking forward to trying that float function on this because I want to be able to see if I'm going to get those marks on there. So, um, yeah, it's, well, actually, Colin, you've just said it's like the pivot function on the V5. It isn't. This machine also has the pivot function because that's exactly what I said. It's, is it a pivot function? It's not the pivot function on Brother Machines. What you do is you sew you, uh, and it pivots, it lifts up, the presser foot for you and leaves the needle in which is a brilliant feature um, so it leaves the needle in lifts up the press foot and then you can swirl your fabric band so it's not you know um, again it's it's just one of those really handy things that you can set your machine up to do so that you have got hands you know your hands free um, to hold the fabric in place um, but no this is a little bit different it actually lifts up the press foot 
and you can just sew with a pivot function you can't it just leaves that uh, foot in there but they they they're mainly the main functions that i wanted to look at on this sewing machine we've got a, a spanner and screwdriver there i'm not sure what that is we've got a memory function in there so uh, that's really good so i'm guessing that we could probably write your usual font you know your usual text like made with love from abby and it saves it in there so i've not got to keep writing it down you can make labels which is really good if you if you mass produce clothes and sell them a lot of you do so i believe this machine is just going to be amazing and blows me right out it blows everything out of the water so yes is it's a computer machine is that something i tend to go with it's not really is it i don't really um go with uh, computer machines it's not me let's have a look at these functions on the front so you've got your thread cutter or automatic thread cutter let's I might be able to hear it there you go i'm <laughs> cut some thread needle up needle down so you've got that function um to sort of set your machine with um whenever you finish sewing uh, sewing it stays down or comes back up or if you're doing uh, just a couple of those stitches that you just you know you're not sure you've not got quite to the end do an extra stitch um tool section i'd be change set oh thank you yvonne so that's what that's for that's so you can change your settings thank you yvonne um we've got so we've got a really good feature here i've not seen this i don't think i've seen it on any machine have i does anybody does anybody know i don't think i have it's not on the brother is it um foot up and down i think it might be on the uh higher end you've got your lock stitch as well as your speed control so you've got your tortoise and your hair slow and fast you've got your lock lock stitches that lock stitch is also you know when you you want to reverse and just do a few stitches back sometimes when you're sewing sheer fabric you don't want to reverse and have those thick um stitches you just want a few stitches in the same spot to lock it in that's really handy for that there are lots of reasons for having a lock stitch um but also if you're doing a decorative stitch and you press the lock stitch it just finishes that design off for you so you don't end up with half a flower or half are there anything exciting on here this is a sewing machine <laughs> i think it's a sewing machine let me just zoom in it looks like ah, my cable's not long enough number 40 does that look like a sewing machine i think it is so we've got some pretty stitches there so what it does yeah, what it does is it just that lock stitch feature just finishes finishes off your stitches for you you've got your reverse button and your start and stop go this is your automatic needle threader it's very easy to do it's uh, similar to most machines i guess and it has a sliding button on the back um again it's very similar to the brother one on the on the no, it's on the side uh, you just press that up and down and that threads up for you should we play with it get it sat let's listen to the sound need to put some threads in there <laughs> i think I, I decided to do these live ones because i know lots of you like chatting with yourselves and i thought well i suppose i could just stand here and play with the machine and let you guys have a chat so chat amongst yourself um sewing trolley dolly hi trolley dolly uh yes the yes the inverse machines the higher ends they do have the up and down button yes emma chat amongst yourselves i'm going to fill in a bobbin i'm just going to just follow it around i don't think you can see what i'm doing you need a bobbin let's grab a bobbin from in there So we don't need to actually fill these in because they have these tiny slits. These tiny slits have got blades in. So we're just going to wind this up a few times. And I should cut my thread. And if I just pull that, it just automatically starts 
feeding the thread onto the bobbin for me. Isn't that quiet? Can we just talk about that for a minute? How quiet is this machine? I don't want to stop. I don't need all that thread, so I'm just pulling it off. That's how easy it is to do. Wow. No, it's full. <laughs> all right, let's take that off and cut that thread. I think that might be a cutter as well, is that a cutter? Yes, it is. Ooh. See, I like, I like good engineering. I do. I like a machine with good engineering. Let's put this in here. Uh, follow it round. Cut that thread. And put that bobbin lid on. Where have I put that bobbin lid? Did anyone see where I put it? There it is. It's got the instructions on there for you. Gosh, that was so quiet, barely even noticed. Let's just feed that through. And then if we catch that onto the holder there and cut the thread on the side. There we go. As easy as that. I didn't need to wear my glasses. Should we try that again? But wasn't that quiet? Was it me or was it really quiet? Let's try again. Brilliant. Okay, let's cut that through. So it lifted up that presser foot, didn't it? Did you see that? It lifted the presser foot a little bit and the needle. And there was no juddering stop from that fast speed. And it's given me, look at those beautiful stitches, lovely even stitches. Not the first one, it's awful. Should we go, should we go really thick? I have got some more of this fabric. Pull out a little bit. Right. I'm going to have to use that extra thrust. I don't know all the details, so I don't know how high the needle is um, from the needle plate, how high the press foot goes and how much we get that, um, you know, the extra thrust, how high this is. Those details I'll find out and I'll put in um, a, a real video rather than a plain video. Let's put that press foot down. Now, let's see. I'm going to try a little bit first. Didn't even bat an eye, did it? <laughs> no, didn't even bat an eye. Let's try the float function. So I'm going to press the float function button there. So that's that one there. So if I press that, I can hear something. Can't see anything. So it's reduced the pressure. I want to see. Okay, let's go that thread. There we go, and it comes out really easily. I want to see the difference in the stitches. Now we're talking industry machinery here. It sounds absolutely beautiful, it really does. I don't know if you get the hear get uh, you hear what I'm hearing, but it just sounds so smooth, it sounds so clean. Um Stitches are perfect. How many layers did we do? One, two, three, four, five. Five layers. Didn't even hesitate with that. That's just pretty amazing. I'm not changing the tension. Do you remember? We were on automatic tension. I've not even changed the needle. Not changing the needle. I'm going to do this. Do you remember this dress that I had? I mean, this golden dress. Ah. The story was hysterical. Bit of stretch. Need it. Let's go for it. Let's see what we get. I'm going to put that function back. We don't need the float function. Press the button. I think we're going to need a stretch stitch. Um, it was no, no bouncing. It didn't bounce at all. If it bounced, you would have heard it on this table. This wooden table would have made a noise. Um, okay, let's have a look. I'm going to use a stretch stitch, so if we're on the panel, 
um, it's a lightning bolt stitch, isn't it? But we don't have a lightning bolt stitch on here. We do have that stitch, the triple stitch. Should we give that one a go? That's lovely. Right, why don't we find it? Look now. So here's the manual. Let's have a look at the manual. Um, it's not too thick. Now, um, I had a V series machine and it was incredible. It was a very thick, very heavy machine. Uh, details. Um, there's not a lot uh, um, going on in here. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, but the instructions are pretty clear, aren't they? You can't go wrong with that. It tells us exactly how to do everything. Um, so I want to find out how to adjust the needle plate. So how are we going to work that out? So we, let's have a look. Changeover of needle holes. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. How to use the straight stitch side plate. All right. Do not turn the hand wheel. Um, right, okay. Change the needle hole. From the needle for straight stitches, turn the power off. It is possible because you don't really want that to happen. So if I remove that, it shows me the lever. If I'm moving the lever to the left, you see, I was trying to move it back and forward, wasn't I? Move the lever to the left, the needle hole for straight stitch is selected. So let's click it over to the left. Did you see that? I don't think you did. See that? So there it is. You can see it flicking. Okay. I have to check. There's a time lag. Yes. So it's now on the needle hole. Okay. So let's pop that back on. Zoom in a little bit. Should we sew from the edge of the fabric? Down. Oh, let's switch the machine. Okay, so we're definitely getting motion, definitely getting stitchy. Right, we're still in the habit of lifting up the press button, we don't need to. And then I've got my stretch stitch. Okay. So, I should be able to sew this now, please work, because if it doesn't work, I quit. <laughs> I'm in call it a day. Um, so, press foot down, I'm starting on the edge. Yay! It worked, yay! Oh, is it working or is it stuck? Oh no, I think it's stuck. I think my thread's gone as well. <laughs> Did I chair too soon? I need a chair too soon. <laughs> I'm just going to quit. I quit. All right, so I'm sure it works when you really set your mind to it and do it properly. Um, and I'm sure it's user error. It always is, inevitably. If they're convinced that it works, and I'm sure you guys are saying it does, um, tell her in 10 minutes what's it oh Colleen it's lovely to have you um, the notice is right in the instruction frozen here now I am sorry it's my screen it keeps freezing um, should we have a quick look and see what the pedal does or should we do um, the buttonhole foot so if I take this off Put the button hole, uh, button hole foot in. I'm sure it's just a pretty impressive piece of equipment, isn't it? And then we plug that in. It's not rocket science. It's a rocket science machine. If I lift up that press foot, and then I'll find... Should we get that leatherette again? Wherever it was. Put it down. Put it down somewhere. I wanted to look at the electric machine, uh, the 
cutter as well. I think I'm going to have to thread that top thread again, aren't I? Let's do that again. Feed from the bottom, not the top. That's bad. It was wrong. This thread, this is a metal thread, it feels quite thick actually. Maybe I should have used a cutter me. Don't make excuses. Making excuses. Let's throw that in there. Put that down. Okay, so buttonholes. Let me see this. Let's have a look at buttonholes. Buttonholes are there. Will, good job you're on top of the game here. Will's just pointed out that I've left it in a straight stitch mode. <laughs> this is what happens when you're trying to do things like maybe I should quit and do a um, play with this machine when nobody's looking and then I haven't got that worry <laughs> right Put that fabric under there thank you Will that was very well spotted that would have been that would have been kaput to my needle wouldn't it might not let you switch in strip stitch mode. No, it might not. And that's probably what's happened. Well spotted, you guys. Ah, well done, Mitchell and Will. You guys are heroes. Who needs me? <laughs> right, we're on buttonhole. I think we just press go. It will bleep and tell you uh, off lol. <laughs> I think you're wrong. It's bleep, beeped at me and bleeped at me. I think I'm just going to press button. I've not selected a button size, have I? <laughs> I'm going to push that back to the. I'm going to push that back a little bit so that we've got some buttonhole size. This is me in panic mode now. No idea what I'm doing. Maybe we shouldn't have done this live. But it's really nice to hear, isn't it? It's really nice to know that you guys are here to help me just as much and that's just brilliant okay let's cut that and that's probably messed up <laughs> giving me <laughs> the tiniest button now let's open that up a bit more i'm going to do this i'm going to cut some of the fabric away do you know what i should be doing i should be using the electric scissors to cut this away let's put it on a double wick of fabric and clamp that in and that clamping mechanism, what that does is it stops those feed dogs from um, chewing on the fabric again. And you get that. And I, and again, it's something that I really don't like happening on fabrics. So put the press foot down and I think we just press go. Well done, pal. Oh, right. No, no, it is. I think I might have come off the fabric. I think we can cheat. Can we cheat? Yeah, I think it came off the fabric. Hopeless. Hopeless. Don't ask Abby. Abby doesn't know. <laughs> That's awful. We're not going to blame the mystery. Oh my gosh. Okay, ignore the bit I've messed up. But isn't that a beautiful, beautiful buttonhole? Really, really, truly is. That's a beautiful buttonhole. That's where I've messed up by uh, placing it in the machine wrong. So um, this is me in panic mode. I should not do that. I should not panic and play with machines at the same time. It's not really good. What was the other feature we were going to look at? We're going to look at a pedal because that was another thing. So we've looked at... Um, we didn't look at the float so much. The buttonhole, I definitely love. Definitely love that. I think, you know, we've done it on that fabric. Should we do it on some chiffon? Should we do it on that knit? Should we try it on the knit? Just don't change the needle plate. <laughs> oh, it won't look good. Um, oh, you guys are ace. Absolutely wonderful. Right, definitely got enough fabric there, haven't I? <laughs> right, let's drop that down. Press it down. And, should we try a different buttonhole? Can we do that? 
I don't know. I don't know how to change buttonholes. I'm going to have to learn how to change these buttonholes in the same direction. Let's just press go. I just press go. <laughs> I just hope it does it well. Well, that's doing that buttonhole. Why don't I have a look for the foot? Um, what do you think of the machine then, Bob? Can you tell us which machine you have? Because it sounds like you're a pro there as well. As well, you are. So you're probably the pro. Oh, one thing I wanted to show you actually is the pressure dial. Lots of sewing machines don't have that pressure dial. And there's, there it is on there. Oops, it's on automatic. It's on fan. Good camera work. <laughs> Let's have a look at this. Um, put that thread. It comes out really nice and sleek. So there we go. It's not the prettiest of buttonholes. But it is a difficult fabric. So I think what I would do on this is I would make the buttonhole wider so that it gives me a bigger opening, a wider opening, can you see? And because of the stretch fabric, I think I would have chosen a different uh, fibre, a thread. The, this thread is quite thick. Uh, it's really not the right thread for this kind of fabric. Um, I would have chosen something... Um, Let's look, I've got some, something like this. So this metal stuff, which has got a shine to it, it's a silky, well this is metallic, but the, some of these silkies, they're really good for fabrics like this. Um, so it matches in with the sheen and it's also like 40 thread, 40 weight. So that would have been better to do. Um, yeah, I do too. So fabrics, uh, so thread machines that, um, Thank you, Yvonne. So machines that um, cut the stitches for you on the top, they really are better um, jump stitches. And actually, what, uh, what I wanted to see was how it cut the thread, if it cut it well. Um, some of you might recognise this fabric. We used it, I think I made a shirt and lined, you know, the inside of the collar and the cuffs with this. So you might recognise it from that. Don't make him very many shirts. He has asked me. Right, there we go. Him being the indoors. I want to see what it looks like when it cuts. Does it cut those threads uh, nicely? Vinta, uh, hi, I'm not actually making anything. I've just unboxed this machine and it's a Juki DX7, so it's a HZL DX7. I am uh, one of those people who don't get, uh, doesn't get on with computer machines, but I'm also very aware of Juki being one of the leading um, machines manufacturers in the world. And I thought, do you know what? I'm gonna get myself a, a Juki machine. Well, actually, initially, only phoned up just to ask about them. I literally said, what's so special about your machines? That was, that was it. And that and then things happen, don't they? It just sort of snowballs and, and you know, you, you end up thinking, right, okay, well, I want to see for myself. You, you're raving on about these things. So it's, um, so it cuts at the top there and it just left a little bit on the bottom and it's just done a beautiful, um, finish on that machine and it's that initial top thread has gone and um, been sewn into the side buttonhole so that's nice do you know what that that's going to make nice buttonholes on shirts isn't it and coats and all sorts of things that's good that's really good okay speed control we've got the switch foot function let's have a quick look so you guys seeing as you're all on the ball I think this machine will be your go-to now for dressmaking. Do you know what, Emma? Really could be. Um, I love machine. Yeah, I'm just keep. I just keep reading all the comments as well. Um, foot function: the sewing machine can be set to carry out one of the following operations. Okay, so this is our foot. Really nice foot. It feels lovely, and that rubber grip so it means I can go barefoot. Reverse stitch, lock stitch, half stitch sewing. When would you use half stitch sewing? Is that when you're quilting and you sort of want to finish right at the end? 
um, but you've not got a full stitch space, maybe. What, what, that, what do you guys might use that half stitch for? Uh, the presser foot lift, thread trimming, well, it has no function. Uh, so it's been set to a factory setting of one with reverse stitch at the time of shipment. Okay, so we need to go back to page 89. Look forward to page 89. Let's have a look. So foot switch function. Now, I know other machines do this, have this, but you've got to pay quite a heavy le uh, levy, fine, fee, cost, or <laughs> something, for these features. So um, with this machine, you get it in, in included. That's a really long cable. It seems to be going on forever. How long is that? Oh, about a metre. About a metre and a half. A bit longer. Right, so let's plug that in. So it should do in automatic reverse. Should we leave it up here so you guys can see? Somebody's getting a very messy work table. Let's get some fabric. Okay, so I've got some fleece here actually because I thought I might do some modding. Um, let's get my fleece put in the whole foot. That's amazing. That's just amazing. I'm absolutely impressed with that. The design on that, the engineering design on that, and the width is going to be altered, I'm guessing, here. I'm going to have to play with this and work it out. Or read the instructions as most people do. Right, <laughs> so we've plugged the pedal in, which means we go back to straight stitch, put our straight stitch foot back in. In really easily. This machine is so quiet. I'm not doing a, a, a promotion at all. It's not one of those things. You all know me better than that. Don't promote things. Um, I just give you the facts and then just go, ooh, if it's good. Um, so the way we do this, I'm guessing, we're just sewing along. And then just put our heel on. Okay, so that was my foot It'd be going along. And then I can lock the stitches like that. That would be a nice feature. You can see where I've reversed. Um, should we change it? Do you know what I would like it to do? I would like it to trim my threads. I think that's what I would like. So we change it to six. So the way to do it is, ah, let's go to the spanner. So we go to the spanner, um, press forward until we get to the foot, which is that one, and then press OK. And then we can choose which function we want. So I think we just keep going until we get to our scissors and then we just press OK, setting complete. So easy. That's what you want. You want a machine that's so easy. Um, everything's been so easy to do. I've not had to really, I mean, <laughs> I've made mistakes. The machine hasn't. Um, let's see if we can do this. Put this foot down. I, do you know what? <laughs> I think that's been so stressful, but so much fun. I, uh, it's lovely that you guys have joined me today. I wanted to show you the scissors. Should I just quickly open the scissors up and then we call it a day? Um, because I think it has been an hour now. And I think you probably guys get bored of me. Right, okay, so here is the electric scissors. Now, why these are really good is um, last year when we were making scrubs, I mean, we literally sent over, just from this room, we sent over thousands. I mean, I think I worked out about 60,000 meters worth of fabric came in here, 
as rolls, as bolts, uh, as sheets. Um, uh, well, this isn't even counting the sheets and the duvets, um, but just as the rolls and the bolts came in here and uh, went out to individuals and then came back um, in the form of scrubs, which meant a lot of cutting was going on. And um, these would have been really handy then. Never got them in time. Never really thought about it because I've never really, um, I've, you know, this is high end, this is professional. This is for people who are doing lots and lots at a time. Now, some of you may be sewing for a, a business okay, um, where you make um, uh, lots of clothes and dresses and cut out lots of maybe purses and bags at a time. Some of you may have arthritis or maybe have difficulty holding things or like me weak wrists <laughs> I've always got something going on um so work so you plug that dc plug in to the charger and then you put your battery in there um but i should be able to do this with the wire as well i think it's supposed to be multi function so i've got aha there we go so I think, does that go in like that? Yes, it does. And then that screws over. So I was doing the wrong wire with two sets of wires in there. That other one is for the charger. So I'm going to put that to the side. I'm going to move the machine over and I'm going to have a plane a bit later. So that you can get close up and see from afar. So I'm going to just try. Do you know there was no effort? That's scary. That's really scary. There was absolutely no effort. I felt like I was barely touching that trigger. It's so light. Okay, see these five layers that we sewed before. Now, it made a lot of noise, but it went through it. Look at that clean cut. I think this is a skip. This is why I've not worn <laughs> before. We oh, it's jammed. No way. That's amazing. Right, I'm going to leave it there. Lots of you are going as well because it is Abbey House the Jag. You still have it. I do have the Jag. Do you know what? I think it's still in the box under the table. <laughs> I think I put it back in the box. I've not, not done a lot of sewing since Christmas. It's just been um, a bit funny. Um, Dutch, this is scary. I'm, I'm, but I'm gonna have to have. Um, that is scary. Should we do now? If you're making stretch fabrics, that's just scary. I think I'm gonna be cutting lots of different things, and I shouldn't. I shouldn't. There should be a safety catch on there so it avoids, um, I'm sure there probably is. Um, but um, exciting new toys in Abby's Den. It's lovely to see you all. I really don't know how to do this, <laughs> but I think I have to come back over to the um, main screen. You can see over there in the corner actually that I bought that Amazon sewing machine, the Amazon Basics. The Amazon Basics, I'm bringing my chair over, the Amazon Basics machine apparently has been compared to uh, the Brother LS14. That's something we should actually look at, shouldn't we? You can see, you can see what I can say when I come up. What else did I want to say very quickly about the uh, DX model? I think I'm going to have to really just um, look at the DX model on a separate video because there are so many features. I just think what I've seen so far, the chap I spoke to, he was incredibly nice, incredibly accommodating. Um, so I definitely want to thank Juki for their support there. Um, was not hesitant to answer any questions. I sent an email uh, to uh, another company, Brother, <laughs> I'm going to say it, because they really annoyed me. 
it wasn't even upsetting it was just a uh, um, uh, go go and look on social media I just asked them you know do they have any new machines out and uh, this was months ago before I was doing these videos and it was um, I'm sure I'm sure uh, you'll find all the information you need on social media didn't even didn't even refer me to a link didn't even give me any help um, some woman there Melanie really very uh, appalling customer service which is why again probably puts me up brother because I think after sales is really important and when I went on social media on Facebook and Instagram and I asked people about these machines um, what I was um, what people said to me were uh, Juki are uh, amazing the customer service is amazing you don't always hear that about uh, companies when you know that they have such a strong hold in the market you just think there's got to be a really good reason and you know why why do people shop at Amazon it's good customer service why do people shop at these places it's always going to be good customer service so even though the machine's good uh, and excellent if you don't get the customer service then what you know there's no point and I know um, you want that so thanks to Juki hats off to you guys this is pretty impressive the machine speaks for itself uh, use error definitely because I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> I've just not even looked at the instructions uh, the capabilities are just phenomenal on that machine um, tensions automatic you've got the float function you've got the buttonhole foot you've got the um, presser foot lift um, the needle threader all the different feet um, there's just so much to play with it so much for me to see and do on there I'm sure lots of you are asking questions I've left my iPad over there let's see if you've got any last minute questions because I think we're going to call it a day um, the Brother LS14 is a really good machine it's, um, I bought them at £55 they were um, selling at £55 and I filled up my classroom with them years ago um, five years ago, four years ago and they shot up to £120 and now I believe they're about £200 I don't think they're £200 worthy I don't. I wouldn't pay more than £100 on them but this one just blown everything I've ever used out of the water so I'm going to leave you there um, you can head over to Instagram follow me on um, I don't really do Facebook as much it's more Instagram now and YouTube so catch me over there do hashtag so with Abby any of your makes if you've got questions then you know just maybe pop a picture up of something you've made or maybe anything that you're looking at and dealing with and um, if it's a question or a problem then um, um, make make sure you put a if you put a hashtag so with Abby with a picture and the question then I can find them easily because they get lost in amongst other things that I'm looking at don't always head over to social media as much nowadays but I will try and I do enjoy chatting with you guys will I be able to uh, review the median overlocker from Aldi so um, the overlocker is um, I, I threaded it, I played with it yesterday, I actually made the video, um, not put it all together yet, um, but I'll tell you now, The I don't know, um, did you buy one Will? Um, it's tricky to thread up the tension discs, it's easy to get it wrong, and one of the guides on the looper, on the overlocker, was... Um, not allowing the thread to go through so I had to yank it with a screwdriver I didn't show that on the video that's just something that you you hear in here now um, but um, I had to get a screwdriver to it to sort of um, open the looper guide a bit more um, but um, once I fixed a couple of those little faults and niggles the threads managed to feed through properly and easily but if you don't feed the threads on the tension discs properly you can actually slip the thread over onto the wrong side of the tension discs which will cause an array of problems also um, at the back where the spools were for some reason one of the spool threads jumped from one to another which was very strange I didn't expect that to happen 
So, um, but £129, it does two thread overlocking, it does um, good stitching, the stitches were good, uh, I was happy with them, um, but I just think that Lidl are going to be bringing machines out soon, I'm not sure, they do every April, don't they? So um, we'll have a look and see what they've got and whether that compares, but I would definitely, um, what would I say, 100 and, uh, uh, um, 1,100 stitches per minute, 90 watt. It's pretty good. It is powerful overlocker. It was okay. Um, but yes, uh, the video's coming out soon, Will. Right, let's call that a day. It's been lovely chatting with you. I will get a couple of videos out in the week. I feel a lot better this week. I was out of it last week. Went for the jab on Sunday morning, and that's me. Um, this is probably for finishes because I really don't know how to do this. See you soon.